record to the computer. Yeah, the problem is I can't record to the cloud. I'm out of my space. So I have to put it on my computer, then I have to upload it to my YouTube. But I did put, for those of you who didn't see, the listing presentation class is up there now. So go watch it. Okay, so Yay. did anyone ever try to sell your home for sale by owner? Because I think this is a great representation of what you feel like, right? <laughs> so I will share a little brief story. I had an agent at another brokerage, and she had been an agent for a couple of years. And she said, Carrie, I want to try to sell my home for sale by owner. Now, of course, with Premier, we don't. We brown on that, but at the other location, <laughs> you're right. We are, I was said, go ahead, do what you want. It took her maybe a month for her to come running back in with that face on saying, I don't know how people do this. And she's a professional. It is the worst experience ever. People, you think now when you have your home listed and agents say they're going to come see a home and then they don't call and they're so rude. Imagine what it'd be like when you're not even at that level. It is horrifying. So we have to put ourselves in the mindset of the people. Now, some really great things to think about. For sale by owners, the fastest source of a business opportunity. I just think that's super cute, but I really don't believe it. I think the fastest source is the expired, but we're gonna look at both. So what is the kind of main difference? Number one is the motivation right? A for sale by owner. Why are they trying to sell by themselves? Are they even motivated to sell? Do they believe that we provide a service they need, right? Because they didn't call us. Did they have a bad experience, right? Is it a trust issue? Or is it just that they really don't need to sell their home and they just watch a lot of HDTV and they think it's Hold on a second. There we go. So, this is one of the most important things to understand. When you're dealing with for sale by owner versus expired, the for sale by owner did not hire us. Now, we don't know if they've ever used this in the past, but we don't know exactly where their mindset is. Why didn't they hire us? What was it that made them say, I can do this without you? Was it a bad experience, right, like I said? Or was it, I really have no motivation? Or oftentimes, if you have a nice conversation with one, you find out it's that they don't need to sell now. But if they will sell, that's great. And then when they get desperate a couple months, then they'll call a realtor. That a lot of times is the case. So I think for sale by owners are good. 80, I think 82% is what NAR says, mm -hmm. ends up listing with us. Um, but it is a time frame. Now here's a pro, right? Because <laughs> I just threw a lot of guns at you. <laughs> but here's a pro of working with for sale by owner. An expired is a little more in your face, right? A lot of times they're angry. They're disappointed. Probably rightfully so, let's be honest. Whereas a forced sale by owner typically doesn't have, not always, but most of the time doesn't have that kind of an attitude. So it's a softer sale. The way I do it is very backdoor, and so this is what I want you to learn. Um, there's nothing worse than going up to a forced sale by owner and asking for their listing. They hate that, by the way. Don't do that. You make no friends. So it's really about how you go about creating a relationship with a for sale by owner and creating trust. So if you're that kind of person that's not really big into any kind of confrontation, you don't like the idea of a cold call that makes you kind of give you the heebie-jeebies, for sale by owners might be your ticket. Just might be right the thing. So we're going to talk about it. So when you are dealing with a for sale by owner, we're trying to build trust, right? You have to meet them. Face-to-face -face always is crucial with a for sale by owner, in my opinion. So when you want to meet them, you pop in. You always happen to be in the neighborhood, right? You just happen to be there. So you can read for yourself or outside, but it, it's, I respect the fact that you're selling your home. You know, first of all, I would say, hi, I'm Carrie Prieto from Premier Sotheby's International Realty. Don't worry. I'm not trying to get your listing. I totally respect the fact that you're selling your home. How's that going? Wonderful. Well, what I really wanted to know was what's your next step? Are you planning to stay here locally or are you going out of town? What did I just do? I changed around my reason for being there. I'm not asking you for something, right? If I come in knock, knock on the door and ask you for your listing, I'm, I want something from you, don't I? But if I come over and I say, congratulations, great for you, sell away. But what are you doing next? Because I can help you for that for free. Right? Now I'm a resource. Now I'm providing an opportunity to create a relationship in a very soft way. Does that make sense? Any thoughts on that, guys? Has anybody done this before? Has anybody seen this kind of technique? No. Yeah, it's kind of a carry thing. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's psychology, right? It really is. It's the getting in the mindset of helping. 
We come from help. We're ninjas, but we always need to come from a place of being a resource and being a help. And so coming and saying, hey, why are you trying to sell your home? I could sell it so much better. You just created a huge conflict and they will never like you and they're not going to use you. Okay. So you have to have some questions set up. So here's the thing. This is my favorite thing with a for sale by owner, right? We're having a conversation. We want to be really conversational. You got to be very careful. Don't ever make it feel like the inquisition when you're doing this. Have some things that they may not know anything about. Some generic questions. I've got some ideas here. Maybe legal things, right? Do they know an attorney? Do they have an attorney in the family or title company or appraisers? Um, you know, obviously I can't help you with any of those questions because we're not in a relationship, but certainly general things I can help you with. Um, do not do the CMA for them. Don't do it. Make them hire their own appraiser. Okay, don't work for free. That is not being a resource. When I say to be a resource, it's not to give them your services for free. Okay, so what I like to do is, is something that it has to be something that is important to you. So the number one thing with a for sale by owner, if you think about it, is did they think about it? Did they really think through what selling their home is going to look like? People they don't know knocking on their door. Who's showing the home? Are they showing the home on the weekends during the week, right? What happens if you get a contract? What happens if they want inspections or what the heck is a contingency? Like they don't know any of that stuff, guys, unless they had been a realtor somewhere else at some other time. And even still some of them, I don't know, so good. But they are don't know any of this information. So to me, and this is true. Okay, I am from New York. I did live in New York City and in Windermere, I do have a chain added on my door. Okay, so this is me. What I get freaked out by is the idea of some crazy pants coming in your home. I mean, think about it. So, Dexter, I see you, so we're gonna role play, except you just bent down. Okay, you're gonna role play with me? So I'm gonna knock on the door. Hi, my name is Carrie Prieto with Premier Sotheby's International Realty. Don't worry, I'm not here to get your listing. Congratulations, I see you're selling your home. That's fabulous. But let me ask you, I was just curious, are you staying here locally or are you heading out of town? Uh, heading out of town. Fabulous, where are you going? Uh, Atlanta. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Atlanta's a great area. And just out of curiosity, are you, you have somebody who can help you because if not, I'd be happy to do that for free. Um... I do, but for the sake of the role play, no, I have no idea. Wonderful. Well, I actually would love to help you. We can even talk a little bit about what you're looking for if you're in the beginning stages. When did you want to get there? Um, probably by February. So you got some time. So if you want, we can kind of set up a little search. You can sort of look. And when you're ready to kind of head up there, we can handpick the perfect agent for you. And I'll make sure that it goes super smooth and be here for you as a resource. How's that sound? Sounds great. How can you make that happen? Oh, well, part of Sotheby's International Realty, we are all over. We're worldwide. We're actually in 72 different countries and territories, so you know we're in Atlanta. So we can definitely find you the most qualified, experienced agent who can help guide you through this huge step of moving. How does that sound? Sounds great. Fabulous. Now, I have to say, I give you a lot of credit selling your home for yourself, but you're not just letting people walk in your door, right? I mean, when people want to see your home, I mean, are you, how are you pre-qualifying them? Uh, I'm not really. Have you ever <laughs> seen a Craigslist killer? Cause I, I can't sleep after that. I can't even sell my own car. I have to go to like Publix. I don't know. I, you, so you just, you no, please don't do that. Don't just let anybody know. How do you know they're qualified? Oh, well, that's a good observation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you work from home by chance? I do. I, right now I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. COVID, right? Uh, well, and that's another question. So you're letting people in your home. Do you have some kind of disclaimer or anything for liability? Because, you know, that's like, everybody's scared about being sued with COVID. Are you, do you have something prepared for that? Oh, I really don't. Hmm. What do you suggest? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things we do. Unfortunately, you know, obviously we're not in any kind of a, a relationship legally, of course, so I can't really help you with that. But uh, it's definitely something you want to think about because you have to be super careful these days. Now, just out of curiosity, do you, are you a, an attorney? Um, yes. No, you're not an attorney. <laughs> no, I'm not. You would have known about the other thing, right? So, do you have an attorney in the family? Um, no, I don't. You know, it's so funny. 
Contracts come just like babies. Babies come in the middle of the night. Contracts come on weekends. So it'd probably be a good idea to make a relationship with one of them because you're going to probably need their services. And on the weekend when they probably charge a double. So that's something you might want to look into. Well, listen, it was been great meeting you. I wish you luck. You know, I have a listing right just down the road. If you don't mind, I'll pop in and check on you, see how things are going. Sounds good. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. You see what we did, guys? The technique is scare the hell out of them. Oh, wait, did I say that? No, but that is the reality. The reality is they don't know what they don't know. And right now during COVID, even more so. Now, with that said, during COVID, people might also be freaked out with you knocking on their door. So we have to really think through this. If they're outside, if you have a mat, always wear a mask, keep your distance, you know. Um, are you doing open houses? No, because we're scared of people. Well, that's why we do so many virtual. There's so many more places we could go with this now because of COVID, but just know that people may get freaked out if you knock on their door. I mean, right? That could be rightful. So make sure you're maintaining far distance, not handing them anything. People don't like that, right? Look at the restaurants. They, I mean, who touched it before? You know, we don't know. So these are things you have to think about. Now, the security thing is huge to me. And guys, has anybody seen the Crisis Killer movie? Go watch it. I'm giving you homework. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Watch the Crisis Killer movie. It's horrifying. And it's true. People are freaks out there. So we need to know do you want some freaks walking through your house? Because I sure don't, right? I mean, think about that. That's a real thing. Now, I will tell you that it has happened when we've just had that brief conversation before you're down the driveway. They're coming out and saying, hey, can we have a conversation? Because especially a lot of times the wife never thought about that. Mm -hmm. And if you stop and think, you're like, what the hell are we doing? Letting some crazy people in our door. Here's another one, guys. How many people know that there was a scam going on before COVID? It was a big one, um, especially during open houses, by the way, but where groups of people would go in and they'd split up so you can't follow them. The whole purpose was to go into the bathroom to take the prescriptions. But it wasn't like they were trying to get the opioids, right? It wasn't like that. If you have one prescription bottle, it could be for the most benign thing. It could be for some vitamins. If it is a prescription, they can get all identity theft from that one label did you know that that one label and you are on the black market that is how it works they're selling your stuff and that is real stuff that's happening out there so we need to be aware of what these things are not to be really mean and uh, scary about it but it's true guys we are helping them do you want some crazy people coming through your house i don't think you should do that so here's some of the things to think about do they have the time for this do they have the time to stop their life to be available to just to show people do they know about liability it is a law in the state of Florida that they must disclose anything readily available that could be a liability or to reduce the value of that home. And if they do not disclose that, they can be sued. They don't need our document to do it, but they do need to do it and they need to do it in writing. And that is a law. They can be sued for that. Do they understand what a legal binding contract is? I am sure they don't. And I hope to God they don't think they can go to Staples and go pick one up. Seriously, you're going to go sell your home from a Staples contract? I mean, people do it, though. You know, how familiar are they with contingency clause? They don't know what a contingency clause is, so these are good things. Security factor for me is the number one. Who's going to show the house while you're at work? Most of the time, the people that are really serious about buying, when are they coming out? During the day, right? I mean, we see listings at night, but we don't see buyers at night, right? Especially because we don't want to show the home at night. It doesn't show as well. We see them during the day. Uh, also, think about this. How are you able to reach the best buyers, the ones that are out of town, who don't have the time to nitpick and really negotiate super hard because they need to be here. They want to be here and they need to come. They don't have access to any of them, do they? That's a huge one. Are they familiar with what closing costs look like? Have they done a net sheet? I guarantee they haven't. Do they have a marketing plan? Please. How many agents don't have a marketing plan? You think a poor sale owner is going to have a marketing plan? No. The pre-qualifying thing, huge. You're just going to let some bozo come through your home for what purpose? What are they really there for? Are they there to buy it? Uh, yeah. Don't you love this? How much does an attorney charge per hour? You might want to find out because it's a couple hundred dollars an hour. Uh, and do they charge extra on the weekends? <laughs> I guarantee they do. So 
Buyer's remorse, that's a great one. How familiar are they? Well, I'm sure that they have felt that too. Now, you probably wouldn't want to say, are you familiar with buyer's remorse? Because that just comes across really pushy, right? But I'd say something like, you know, it's funny. I buy an expensive pair of shoes and I'm feeling bad about it. I mean, imagine someone buys a house, they don't really know what they're doing and they want to get out of it too. That's a horrible thing. We deal with that a lot. Have you seen that? Now, they know they felt it too. Come on, everybody's gone through buyer's remorse at some part in their life. Have you set up a weekend schedule? Yeah, good luck, bye-bye. Did you wanna have any weekends? That's over. Open houses, again, we could talk about that in a different way now, certainly about virtual open houses, how we're reaching so many more people virtually than ever, right? Because that's the truth of it. Um, that's a great thing to talk about. The marketing plan, yeah. Who's gonna hold the earnest money? Hmm? I mean, you gotta be careful with this kind of stuff. That could be a whole legal problem right there. Where's that money going? Are you co-mingling? Can you co-mingle it? If you do, what happens to it? What did you say that you'd sign? It's not an escrow account. Where are you going to put it? You're going to put it in your, your bank account, right? Let's talk about that. Now, if you're in an area, Winter Garden, Windermere, Lake Nona, anywhere there's building going on, how are you competing with the builder? You know, so many people love to buy a new home, just like myself, because that one year full bumper to bumper warranty. Do you have anything set up for that? No, they don't. They don't know anything about that, right? Have you obtained the government required forms for lead-based paint? If it's an older home, guys, that's a huge one. You do not want to get in that lawsuit. If you sell a home before 1978 and you did not do the proper disclosure of lead-based paint, you do not want the government knocking on your door because they will. That's an ugly one. As a brokerage, we will get huge trouble for that. So a homeowner is not out of luck. It's not like, oh, just because you didn't know, you don't have to do it. That's not how it works. So this is important stuff right here. So the key is we wanna talk about how we can save them time, save them money, save them hassle, really assist them. But this is where a forest sale by owner takes time, okay? So in my opinion, you pick up one or two things that you're gonna kind of focus on in that drop by. A drop by should only be a few minutes. Do not spend a long time there. Cause otherwise you're just gonna either just be chewing up, you know, talking about God knows what, or you're gonna throw everything at them all at once. Don't do that. You wanna pick and choose what you do because the next step is a drop by. So when I went back the next day, Dexter, you're gonna continue to play my game with me? Yeah. Oh, how fun. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to have to Hey, Dexter. So good to see you again. How you been How you been doing? Doing well, Carrie. How are you? I'm great. Did you try that virtual open house thing? Oh, no. That's just too much. I don't have the time for that. It's too bad. We had over 400 views, and I actually got a bunch of people wanting to come see it. So we're going to do some virtual showings, actually. So you might want to consider it still. It's an amazing tool. There are so many people right now who want to move and just be, have the opportunity to kind of really see your home firsthand. It's so incredible, very powerful. But, you know, I have to tell you, the real reason I stopped by today is because I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about you, kept thinking about crazy people walking through your door, and I just, I just, as a person cannot handle that. So what I did for you is I spoke to a really good friend of mine who's a mortgage broker and I asked him, I said, Maria Smith from Center State Bank, would you do me a huge favor? Dexter's the nicest guy and he's letting anybody walk through his home. Would you please pre-qualify anybody he has? So she agreed. So here's her card. Do not let anybody walk through your home until Maria has given you the green light to say, yes, they're ready to go. So when they come up to you, you say, I would love for you to come see my home. Here's a card. Call Maria. She will make sure that everything is good and then we'll set a time. Guys, first of all, you just created a possible pipeline for your mortgage broker. Who's going to love you? You might also get some of those buyers, right? Because what is she going to do? Hand them right back to you, right? When they don't buy that house. So what an awesome thing. And what did you do for the for sale by owner? Okay, I'm gonna throw it out there. You became a resource, right? You're assisting them without asking for the sale. But you're also not doing anything more than giving your mortgage broker work, right? You're not doing a CMA. You're not, do not hold an open house for a for sale by owner. That, especially if we're in normal times, or even a, even a virtual open house, that is the worst idea in the world because who is going to see it probably? Somebody with a representative, somebody with an agent, and you're cut out of the deal. What good did you get from that? 
nothing. So don't do that. I've seen a lot of agents who think it's a good idea to do an open house or something for a for sale buyer. It's the worst idea in the world. That's a waste of your time and time is money. Uh, here, so then you've got to decide what is the next little nugget you're going to throw out there so to prepare you for the next follow-up. So some of the things that I love, I oh, per, for me, I always start with security and the follow-up is always going to be the mortgage broker. If you're in an area of new construction, I'm going to throw in, you know, it's so funny. So many people think that your neighbor is your, your competition, but the reality is how many builder signs did you see driving down the road? Oh, and they just give away everything. They have such deep pockets and worse people want to buy it because they have a course of home warranty. It's just, you haven't noticed that being a problem. Okay, that's great. Right. <laughs> I might throw that one in. So if I did that one, my next drop by is going to be, I spoke to a dear friend of mine who works at American Home Shield. And I asked her, would it be possible for you to go ahead and offer a buyer's home warranty for one year? So here's the information. You can contact her and you can do that. Again, guys, did I sell your service? No. Nope. We don't do that anyway, right? We pass that off. So the concept is it's the third party stuff that we're not doing anyway, right? But it's providing a service. You're becoming a resource. They're really beginning to like and trust you, aren't you? Because you're not asked. You've never asked. Not one time. You do not ask the for sub owner to list their home. You wait for them to do it to you. I would tell you four drop bys. If by the fourth time they have not shown any interest in you listing your home, you wish them luck and I wouldn't drop by again. Move on. Because you don't need to do their whole damn job for them either, right? <laughs> but I will tell you nine out of 10 times when you create a good relationship and they see that your intentions are pure and you're really helping, they're going to ask you for help. And the other thing you can throw in is, and listen, I understand you guys aren't attorneys. You don't know anybody. So if you want, when you do find that buyer, contact me. And for a discount of service, I can help you with the contract side. Could you charge them one, two percent to do the contracts all day long, guys? All day long. We didn't spend a penny in marketing. I'm fine with it. Okay. So it's not against anything Sotheby's. I have no issues with that. If you want to help a for sale by owner doing the paperwork when they already get their buyer, it's their neighbor who wants to buy. Can I do the paperwork? Can I charge them a fee? Absolutely. We sign a commission agreement and you do it for whatever percentages you say you want to do it for. I'm totally fine with that. That's extra cash. You've helped somebody. Who knows? Maybe you're going to help them on the buy side somewhere. Maybe you're going to use it as a referral, right? This is an opportunity to gain extra business that you wouldn't have gotten. And you've helped somebody who can give you a great testimonial. So these are all, imagine what that force of owner would say. Carrie, she kept coming by. She was so helpful. I didn't know anything about the process and she really guided me and I wasn't even paying her. Right? That is for that service oh. like what percentage do uh, realtors usually charge for that service it depends if they're representing both sides how complicated the deal is i would say one to three percent is typical sometimes i've seen people do it for four uh which i love <laughs> but it really depends on you know how much and how involved you are and then so you just figure out the terms like okay the seller is paying it or the buyer is paying it, or they're splitting that cost or whatever that is exactly you're doing the contracts. We're collecting money to do those contracts. It's going under our errors and emissions. Guess what? You can claim it in MLS as your listing. Yes, you can. You put a data sold entry only. And if you represent this listing and buy, you can do claim both sides. No, no realtors were involved. Sweet. Now, where it gets ugly is obviously if the, the buyer has another agent, then you could say, listen, I feel so terrible. I think that's wonderful, but they're being represented and you're not. So to represent just you in the sales, so somebody's looking out for your interest, I'd be happy to do that for a 1%, 2%, whatever you want, right? So just because the buyer side has an agent doesn't mean that you can't still offer that service because it's true. It's just like going to the builder. People think they go to the builder and those really nice people on the other side are, we're looking out for them. <laughs> no, they're not. They work for the builder. Hello. They're looking out for the builder, not for the customer. They may be nice. They're going to be helpful. Hopefully they're going to be ethical and all of that good stuff, but they're not working for the, the, the customer. They're working for the builder. Same thing here, right? Questions on any of this so far? Nobody?
Yes, I have a question. How, um, how far are you spacing those visits that you're doing, those three or four visits? Like about a week. Okay. Yeah, you know, again, you want to hit them. It depends on the conversation. If you have a conversation with somebody and they say, listen, Carrie, you know what? We're just kind of throwing it out here to see if we get any bites. But, you know, probably in about a month, if we don't have anything, I am going to look to sell. And, I, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you at that time. I'm not probably going to be dropping by every week offering stuff to help sell their home. Why the hell am I going to do that, right? But I would keep in contact. But if that type of conversation has not happened, then I would suggest about once a week. Thank you. I used to like to do it with the, the timetable of I was just here for another open house. Because that's always a fun one. You say, yeah, we had like 20 people. How about you? Did you guys have a lot of people in your open house? They never do. Okay. <laughs> so it, their open houses are usually the worst. They put one sign in front of their houses as open house. No kidding. You had nobody come? That's horrifying. <laughs> so it's really fun. Um, so again, you want to really think about, you know, couple of days, a couple of reasons. You're in the neighborhood. You also could do a neighborhood report for them. That doesn't take you any time. Security, of course, we're going to talk about the pre-approval, a home warranty. I love that one. So the neighborhood report one could be, you know, it's so funny. All these homes are selling for so much faster and you can do the stats in that neighborhood. I just did a stat on my neighborhood. Was it? Who was I working with? Oh, good God. I don't remember, but it was crazy. They are selling for 45% faster than they did last year at the same time for uh, $95,000 more. And the average sales price was 500. So that's a significant difference, right? So if you say, wow, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I, you know, I just wanted to run some stats for you just to see that, you know, to make you feel comfortable and confident that you are right. Now is the time to sell your home, right? So I did a neighborhood report for you. And I just wanted to see it was so interesting. Your neighbors have been selling 45% faster than last year. How long have you been trying to sell your home? <laughs> right? It's the good and the bad. And it's all about how you present it. And did you know that on average, they're getting $95,000 more now because so many people are coming from out of town. So what are you doing to capture those out of town buyers? Nothing. They don't know what to do, guys, right? So this is how you have to set it up. I have a list, which I'd be happy to send it to you. And that list gives you kind of like what you saw, tons of reasons. Pick through a couple. Pick through a couple and decide what your next drop-off would look like. Again, the security is easy. You go for the mortgage broker. The home warranty is fabulous when you're dealing with new construction. I love the neighborhood report. That's a fabulous one that you can drop by. You can also pull a school report, something happening with the school. It takes two seconds to pull stuff from our PR, but you never, ever, say it with me, we never, ever do a CMA for free for them. We don't do it it's not worth it. You could drop by with the phone numbers for some inspectors. That's a great thing, right? Because you'd give it to a buyer anyway, who cares? So, you know, I say, you know, I'm just curious, like, do you have the network because inspectors, have you thought about what the inspection is going to look like? Hmm. Well, here's the next time you come by, drop some inspectors. You could do that with an appraiser. Eh, I probably would be a little bit it, the appraiser one would probably be one of my last ones because if I felt like their pricing was way off and I didn't want to handle it anyway, unless they got to more realistic, I would probably do the appraiser at that time. But you got to be a little careful with the appraisal one if you follow my drift there because it could go good or bad. So keep that towards the end if you want to do that one. Another um, opportunity. So there is, it's called the TMPCO, the the T-M-P-C-O, the Marketing Personal Company, something like that. It's a really weird name, but it's T-M-P-C-O. I'll be happy to email it to you if you guys need it. They have a neat little targeted campaign. It costs $10 for a house. They will send uh, a series of eight postcards over every like four days. I don't really like the for sale by owner ones. I like the expired ones better, but they, you could do it to a for sale by owner too, especially now because of COVID, right? Maybe if you're feeling like you don't want to approach them. This is a kind of a fun way to test it to see if you get anywhere. The reason I really don't like it for four sale by owners, because the true thing about a four sale by owner is again, motivation, mm, right? Do they have truly an idea that um, your services are worth anything? Mm, 
probably not. So by sending them a postcard, you're really not building any trust. You're not building any kind of value in your services. You know, so to me, a for sale banner really is better. I like the targeted campaign better for expires if you wanted to go that route. But um, it is another option, especially right now with COVID. I wanted to bring it up. Um, any questions before we move on for expired, for sale owners rather? Nobody. Everybody knew all of that stuff. <laughs> Nobody's learned anything. So sad. I'm sorry I couldn't teach you anything here today. No. It was great. Learned a lot. You're such a great teacher. That's why we don't have questions. Thank you. <laughs> At least I got feedback and it's so good. My head won't fit through the door now. Yay. All right, good. We have a question. Oh, good. What you got? Yeah. Do you have? <laughs> What's the name of the company again? They send the postcards? Oh, T uh, let me put it in the chat. Hold on, let me find that. Where's my, where's my little chat? It's polling. Chat. Okay. D-M-B-C-O.com. There it is. It's a weird name. But I mean, it's super cheap. 10 bucks for a campaign, right? It's like, it's worth a shot. Um, and you can customize them, but they really have all the, the things you'd want to talk about there, which is kind of funny. Okay, we're gonna move on to my favorite one. You ready? Expired. Oh, one other thing. How do you find four sub owners? Let's talk about that really quickly. You can look on Zillow. Does everybody know that? If you search in Zillow, you can pull up type and you can, for sale by owner is a type. Expired is a type. Another one, which in my opinion truly is like a for sale by owner is make me move. Zillow, make me move. So basically what they're saying with make me move is, you know, if somebody was willing to pay me X, Y, Z for my home, I'll sell it. When that first started, which was a couple of years ago, probably three or four years ago, honestly, um, the numbers were ridiculous. It'd be like me saying, okay, if someone will pay me a million dollars for my home, I will sell it. Guys, by the way, anybody want to pay me a million dollars to be happy to sell my home. But, you know, I mean, it's not really realistic, right? So it's ba based upon a, a realism factor. But I would say that over the last definitely a year or so, I haven't looked recently, but uh, I did look probably about six months ago before COVID started. And I was finding those numbers were pretty realistic, which was interesting. So that's a good place to look. So Zillow is definitely not a fan. I'm not a fan of Zillow, but it is a good opportunity for you to get data from it. Um, there is also the For Sale by Owner website. Again, that's another place. But to me, For Sale by Owner should also be close to you. Because if you're going to be doing drop-bys, you don't want to have to drive all the way across town. Oh, I happen to be here. That's a waste of time. And to me, a For Sale by Owner, I'm not going to say it's a shot in the dark, but your chances on the For Sale by Owner are less than an expired. So would I put the same amount of time, energy, and gas in? No. I would make sure that they were in an area that was close to me, that would be easy for me to do my drop by and build a relationship. Any questions on any of that? Is there a question about um, like when you find them, is there a way to put like alerts for just FISBOs like in a specific area or zip code? Well, that's a good question. I mean, when you, like Remind, you could create a, a, an alert and Remind, but it'll only tell you if it goes on the market. Oh, right yeah. so what kind of alert are you looking for like if a new like, one it, like for example if somebody in my neighborhood uh puts a fizzball on zillow or or on um realtor.com like can i get a, a notification to my email so i can go and knock on their door and get that's a great it. question and i don't really know the answer because honestly i never search on zillow let me ask my husband he's only the husband of a broker who's been in this industry for 50 years he has all the resources but looks at zillow all the time so <laughs> I'll, I'll do some research too and whatever I find I'll, I'll share. Let me know because I, uh, I don't really know. I don't play in there. Okay. But that's a good question. Okay. Again, my favorite thing about expireds are they already hired us. They believed enough in a realtor to hire them. They had enough motivation to move that they went through the process. And let's be honest, listing your home, showings, it kind of sucks. Would you guys agree with that? It's not a comfortable, fun thing. I mean, having to make sure your home is show ready all the time, it's, it's really not very fun, but they still did it. So that tells us that they have need. They probably have some urgency and they believed enough in our services to hire us. So the other cool thing is if they've been expired, 
uh, and depending on how long they were on the market, what you saw during price drops. Like if it's somebody who you know is overpriced and they never have one price drop, could be worth a call, right? But I wouldn't put a ton of time in that because no sense in taking an overpriced listing. I only want a saleable listing, something that will actually sell. So what's the top point in putting your time, energy, and money into something that's never gonna make you anything? I wouldn't do that. So we've gotta be very careful when we're looking at the expired. We're trying to figure out a little bit about why we think the home expired, why we think it didn't sell, and those are all things you should know before you're meeting with them. Now, this is what I love. What can we do that other people can't? Well, kind of like, what can't we do? But anyway, so the reality is nobody has the global reach that we have. And now more than ever, that is important because people cannot travel, but people are still buying virtually. I mean, how many people do you guys know that have bought the home on sight unseen? In our office alone, uh, last month we had, it was like a $1.2 million sale, virtual, sight unseen bought the home okay it happens in every price point happens a lot in the four or five hundreds for sure but it definitely even happens in the millions so that is a huge opportunity for us to be able to have a connection to agents in other locations where we can share information with our customers and we can really work together right that's huge now we also have the analytics the tools to know who is looking? Where are they located? You know, that gives us a huge edge that nobody else has. You know, the half of the battle is finding out where the people interested are coming from, right? That is something that Sotheby's has. Marketing, nobody can touch our marketing. Nobody has the opportunity to be in the Juai, the Nikai, the Wall Street Journal, the, the Rob Report, the Mansion Global. Could you pay to be in there? You can. There are services that bundle some of these things. They're very expensive, several thousand dollars per listing, right? And this is the thing. You might be in there, but where? Did anybody watch McKnight and John Pinnell yesterday, right? They were awesome. What did they say about being in a magazine? They're not going to do it unless they're featured. Otherwise, what the heck is the point? This is what those people are missing that are spending thousands of dollars to be in these, you know, do I, you know, in those bundles. Sotheby's has an exclusive relationship that gives us the advantage of always being featured. We are the featured real estate relationship with those magazines. So even if these people are paying thousands of dollars, it doesn't mean that those homes are going to be featured. They'll be on there somewhere, right? That's a huge difference. So the other thing is, we have an accountability piece because remember that's really crucial with an expired most of the time they're angry and a lot of times they're gonna say my agent did nothing right I mean how many of you have spoken to an expired and they say it's kind of like you know the kids who say I, I failed because my teacher was terrible there might be some truth in that but there's also some responsibility on the other side but we're gonna hear that a lot when we call an expired yeah my agent was terrible they didn't do anything so those are the folks that will love and appreciate the accountability we offer through Pulse and List Track. Every week, Lauren, you're going to be receiving from us an amazing report telling you all the new things we are doing, all the places your home is being showcased. You're going to be able to see it, click on it, and actually view your home in the Mansion Global, in the James edition, in the Rob Report. You'll be able to see what that looks like. And then you'll also be receiving another report from Sotheby's telling us how it's working. It's one thing to do it, but if we don't even know if it's working, it's like banging your head against the wall, right? Here we get to see, is it working and where is it working? And now based on the cities they're coming from, the Sotheby's offices they're located and they're, they're working with, we can now work with our partners on the other side. We can work and do social media targeted campaigns and really hyper target the folks that are most qualified and interested in purchasing your home. Guys, you know anybody else who could do that? I mean, y'all have worked at other places before. You know, there's like nobody here who's never worked anywhere else before. Nobody has that. There's, this is like a huge thing. So I like to say, can we make a difference in any price point? Of course.
Of course we can. But if you have a home in the 300s that's expired, my question is why and how, right? That market is so tight right now. If you're seeing a home that's expiring in 300s, there's got to be something weird with it. Would you agree? But could homes be expiring seven, eight, nine, a million, two million? Absolutely all day long. They need a different type of marketing, right? How many people can go out and buy a million and a half, $2 million home? Do we really think that those buyers are here local? Um, maybe not, maybe not, right? They may be in Florida, maybe. They may come from our other offices because our normal, our, our typical, if you call it that, customer is a second, third home buyer who's buying a home up in the mountains in North Carolina, who's buying a home on the beaches in Naples or Sarasota, and who would love a place here by Disney that they could take their family, yada, yada, right? So that is a lot of the time our clientele. And, you know, not everybody has access to that. As a matter of fact, I don't know anybody who does. I would challenge, does anybody suggest another company that has access to that level of clientele? I hear nothing. And the reason is because nobody does. And Christie's, we can talk about Christie's. Christie's is an auction house, as we all know, just like Sotheby's. God, that's good, mind you, but you know, they are an auction house. Uh, but the difference with Christie's is they don't have a real estate arm. Sotheby's has their own real estate arm. There are corporate owned stores or market centers or whatever they call them. <laughs> and there are affiliates, right? And we all work together. Christie's does not have that. Christie's gives other companies the opportunity to pay to use their name, to elevate them by association. But let me ask you, do their listings get put in front of their auction clientele? I'm going to answer it for you. No. So that is a huge advantage that we at Sotheby's have, that people from other companies, even if they are associated by pay with Tristie's. They don't have that. So I challenge you to tell me someone else who truly has a network of individuals that will be uh, an opportunity for us to put our listings in front of. Does anybody else have that kind of private network? I don't know any. If anybody does, please share it with me because I'd love to hear about it. So this is huge. Any other questions or thoughts about that? Because I think this is something that really makes us do so great with expireds. And I'm going to share with you, and they're not here because they're off doing more of them, the Aponte team, Tatiani, Carrie, Jen Harnett, and Luciana are killing it. All expireds. I'm here. <laughs> oh, you're there! Jen, you're killing it. Can you share with everybody? Yeah, it's going really well. Um, I had, I did a FISBO call. It's not expired, but I did a FISBO. And then um, they, we met with them last Friday. And then they signed yesterday. What? Tomorrow. Girl, yeah. I can't bow down. I'm out of FISBO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. I like FISBOs, but. Um, <laughs> you're so soft. You Mary does really well with expireds, though. Oh. She likes those. Which is funny because I wouldn't think that. Oh, she's tough. I like that. Yeah, she likes them. She nurtures them really well. And then some of them take her like six to eight months, but they're all starting to roll in now. So beautiful. Well, you guys are a, a shining beacon for everyone because you are really doing this stuff. You're using it and it is working. I mean, how many listings do you guys have right now? 15, 20? I don't even know. Um, I, I don't, 10, 10 to 15, maybe. I don't know. I just go on your page when I want to show people what things look like. And I'm like, oh my God, there's so many things here. So that's all I know. But so thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Okay. So let's get down to the crux of, okay, we know why we want to use them, right? We, we know why we want to work with them. We know what we can do for them that nobody else can. But how do we convey that, right? How do we get that conversation going? This is the question. And here comes a script that I have developed and it's really difficult. <laughs> it's three things. The most important thing, in my opinion, in the expired is to get in, get out. Your whole goal for that phone call is an appointment. Whether it's a virtual appointment, I can tell you that a lot of people have been very successful doing virtual listing appointments, but you want to get in front of them because it's very different for me to tell you. It's, it's like the difference between feature dumping and having a conversation of how we can help.
You know, if we walk into a kitchen and a new home builder and I say, we have granite countertops, 42 inch cabinet, I'm, who cares? Okay, they're not blind, they can see all of that. That's what it's like if we're just telling them this stuff. But if we have an opportunity to have a conversation, we can share with them the fact that we have customers all over the globe, but we also have our own affiliates that we can speak to and help work together. And they can go to their customer base and help find your customer for your home. That's huge, right? So just by saying we're in 72 different countries and territories doesn't mean anything. Like who cares, right? It's all about that. And you can't really do that in my opinion, unless you meet them face to face. Cause otherwise it's just like wah, wah, Charlie Brown, right? <laughs> I think I sound like that to my kids a lot. Did you do the dishes? Wah, wah, right? so, <laughs> okay. So these are the three questions, Lauren. Your answer is going to be yes. I'm going to share that with you, okay? Hi, this is, hi, is this Lauren? Yes. Hi, Lauren, this is Carrie Prieto from Premier Sotheby's International Realty. Am I catching a bad time? Yes. No, that question's, you know, okay. Okay, sorry, I'll call later. No. <laughs> no, it's a good time. Oh, great, I was just curious. I noticed your home is no longer on the market. Are you still planning on moving? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Well, just a question. If I were able to net you the same amount of money you were hoping to get, would you be interested in having a conversation? Sure. Yes. Terrific. What works better for you today at five or tomorrow at 11? That's it, guys. This is not magic. There are three things you need to know. Now, if the first one should tell us to say yes, that's funny. Obviously, we want to do also ask if they're, this is a bad time, right? We always want to make sure that people know that we're respecting their time. I think that's an important thing to talk about. So I don't write it on here, but that's like common decency, right? But are you still planning on moving? If the answer is no, you know, then that's the mute point. So that's an important one. But we don't need to know what happened, why, why did your home come off the market? No, this is not the time for that. In and out. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm strong on this because this, could, you could, you know, they say talking past the sale. Everybody know what that means? You've got somebody who says, yes, yes, I'm ready to go. And then you keep going and going and going. And then they're not anymore. That's what happens on a call. Don't talk past the close. Okay. So are you still planning on moving? Yes. However you say this does not matter. Put it in your own words, in your own language. But basically, if we can get them the amount of money they wanted to get, would they want to have a conversation? Who would say no to that? I mean, please, anybody want to throw an objection there? Because I'd love to hear it. Nope. Nobody has any objections for me? This is surprising. Most people try to like to get me stumped. I, I can't believe I don't have anybody trying to stump me. Um, you know, maybe someone could say, uh, why do you think you could do it when the last person couldn't? That's a fabulous question, Mr. Seller. Thank you so much for asking, which is exactly why I'd love to have a conversation. Does today work better for you or tomorrow? Right? Push it off. Roll with it. The point of the conversation is a meeting, either in person or virtual, but you've got to get in front of them. That is the, the magic with expireds. Once they see and understand the value of what we offer, who's going to say no to that? Now, you might say no right? If they're not realistic, if they want you to do it for no money, you know, you don't, you're not desperate. You say, well, thank you so much. It's been really nice having a conversation with you. I can see why you didn't sell your home. No, I'm just kidding. Don't say that. <laughs> Think it, but don't say it. <laughs> right? But we're all thinking it. <laughs> but remember, I loved Mick Knight said this yesterday too. He looks at a listing consultation, conversation, whatever you want to call it, as an interview that goes both ways. They're interviewing him. He's interviewing them. Don't forget that. That is important. And the most important thing about that truly is the mindset. Because if you are thinking that, oh, I hope they pick me. I hope I can do. Desperation is something that is easily smelled. People can sense it a mile away. And if they feel you're desperate, either you're going to think that you're not believing what you're telling them, right? So you're going to lose trust. Or worse, they're just going to beat you up on commission. So... People thrive on weakness, They'll, especially people that are drivers, you'll be in trouble, you'll get eaten alive. So the more that you have the mindset of, I'm interviewing you as much as you're interviewing me, I'm very comfortable walking away. That's why I love this one. You know, I'm so excited, Deborah, that we had this opportunity to meet and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you more, but I just want to let you know, 
right in the beginning. You know, there's three things that are going to happen today, and I'm good with any of them. One, you and I are going to have a fabulous conversation. We're going to be totally on the same page, and we're going to say, yes, let's get this home sold. Or you might say, Carrie, maybe I don't agree with everything that you think or, or suggesting, and that's okay. Or I might not feel comfortable with the price or the time frame that you need to get. And then I might say, thank you for your time, but it doesn't work for me either. Sound good? Sounds great. Right? Set yeah. that expectation, guys. It is crucial they know we're good. Whatever happens, we're either going to be on the same page, but if we're not, they can say no, we can say no. There's no problem there, right? It's important to do that in the beginning. Okay, so any questions on how this expired script works? How are we getting their phone number? Great question. Thank you for asking. So if you're really a dialer, you might have a system like Mojo. You might have a system like, oh, what did she use? There's a bunch of them. I can't think of all the names of them. But that's expensive. It's costly. And if you're not planning on doing this, I wouldn't go there. The other thing you can do, the Red X, I'll put that in the chat so you have that. That is a much uh, less expensive way to do it. And it's right here, the Red X. Um, or it could be red x to come but i think it's the red x that search for that that also it's like 89 dollars a month or something like that and i don't think i think there's different time frames and I'll, i don't know if you could do month to month you might have to do three months i don't know you have to check out i don't recall or you can always look in remind so my first step would be check remind out now remind will tell you if they're on the do not call registry if they are don't call them right do not call them the other thing that you can do is if you can't find their number or you're just a little scared, you can start this way. And this is an expired letter, and I don't know if I can zoom in. Uh, I ha can be happy to share it with anybody. The concept with this letter is, notice when I do uh, any type of marketing, the most powerful thing with anything written is white, the white space. If you have too many words, too many things squished in, people are not going to read it. So. Uh, that's why you'll see two sentences space, two sentences space. Now, you don't need all of these things, but first one is just basically, sorry to say, your home didn't sell. Don't be too discouraged. Other homes in your neighborhood have been selling. Why not yours? So true. We can even say other homes have been selling twice as fast for double the money. Why not yours? <laughs> it's a little bit blood in the wound there, but yeah, good. This is the most important thing. You can say it any way you want. It's not too late to get it done right. This part here is you calling out a reason their home did not sell. There are plenty of qualified buyers, but they start their search online. Professional photos are a must for the good first impression. If there's not professional photos, such an easy one. If it's in an area where there's competition with builders, you could say there are plenty of qualified buyers with but so many new home communities nearby if you don't have an agent who understands how to take traffic from a builder it will be very difficult to sell right let's be honest you need to understand how to sell for and against new homes and you need to know how to steal their traffic so that is a crucial thing and you may personally not have the new home experience yourself but i have years of it so you're on my team so your team has years of it you have years of it on on-site and years of it in management so use that experience it's yours because you're on my team Always lead from the team if you don't have that experience. So that is the most important paragraph. Never, ever bring up price here. Don't do it. Don't bring up commission. That's a lot of times, that's a great one. When you go to a listing, especially a high price one, and they were offering two and a half, two and a half, and zero to no transaction brokerage. Um, I hate that, guys. There's still some of you still doing that. I'm going to share it again. I hate that. Here's a question to the team. How do you actually pay nothing? How can you do that? It's time to close. How do you get to pay the other side nothing? Anybody know? No, because it never happens. Because what they have to do at the time of contract, if they are not a transaction broker, which everybody's assumed to be in the state of Florida, at the first meeting with the customer, they must have them sign a disclosure. The disclosure will either be for single agency or it will be for non-disclosure, non-representation. I'm not representing you. I will you know, count for funds and be fair and honest, but I'm not representing you. That disclosure must, by Florida law, be signed at the first visit with the customer. 
When they send an offer, they must send that disclosure of their relationship, their agency relationship with the offer. I have been doing this for God knows almost 20 years. I have received one in 20 years and I've seen a lot of contracts. And the one I did receive, by the way, the guy didn't know what the heck he was doing. And we ended up paying him the whole commission anyway. So when you guys are doing that, you're not helping anybody. And you know how a lot of you probably are not saying anything, but you probably didn't realize what that was. Don't worry. Nobody knows. So if you're an agent out there and you don't know what that means, you might think, oh, I better not show that home. I might not make any money. All you are doing is reducing the amount of exposure on that home. So again, I'm on my soapbox, but don't do it. Three, 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 two, two, whatever you're doing. So I love to go to that one. Say, you know, I'm just curious. Why was it that you decided you wanted to cut out a whole group of agents to not pay them to sell your home? Mm -hmm. What expired are you going to say, oh, I chose to do that because they don't even know you're doing it as an agent. You know that, right? They have no clue the agent did that. Mm -hmm. Even if they sign the MLS data sheet, by the way, that MLS data sheet so full of stuff, who think reads it? I mean, the agents hardly read it. Like, you think the sellers are going to read that? Very, uh, very, very few and far between read that. They don't know that. So if you say, again, always in a question. We don't want to be confrontational. And just out of curiosity, Deborah, what was the reason that you chose to not offer any commission to an entire uh, agency type relationship? Actually, I have no idea. I mean, I just thought it was odd. I would think you'd want everybody trying to sell your home. No? <laughs> well, it makes sense when you say it like that. But when you think <laughs> when you're saving money, it sounds good to cut people out. Well, see, the problem is if you're saying, I'm not going to give you any commission, those are people, they're not going to bring buyers. So if they had buyers, they would never bring them to see your home. I guess I have my saving hat on and not really investing hat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is I noticed that you're offering two and a half percent to the transaction brokers and single agents. I'm just curious why you did that since so many of your neighbors are offering 3%. And unfortunately, there are agents out there who will not bring their customers to a home that's less than another home in the neighborhood. What made you choose to do that? I thought again, it, it was wearing that silly savings hat and I realized that I've not invested my time wisely and I'm sitting on the market. So you would be comfortable then offering everybody the 3% to come see your home? Yes, because I don't want to keep having my home up for sale. Yes. Excellent choice. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? That's what we're talking about. That zero on that transaction brokerage, I'm going to say use it every time against the other agency. In a very sweet, nice question. Just curious why you chose to do that. Why did you choose to exclude all these agents? You didn't want them to show your home? <laughs> They'll be like, what are you talking about? Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. We've done that. Jen, were you on that call with Tatiani when we did that? I don't know if you were. I don't think so, no. I oh, yeah. That, maybe it was Luciana. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that 16 million thing. Yeah. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You chose a whole group of realtors that you didn't want to show your home. <laughs> yeah, and I think I did that online because I just didn't know. And I think I've always seen it like that as 1% or something. So I was like, okay, I guess that's how it's supposed to be done. So you and everybody else. So thank you for saying that. But I'm telling you guys, you're not doing yourself any favors. That doesn't mean that if an agent from Miami wants to send the customer and have you do all the work, that they only get paid 1%. It has nothing to do with that because that's agency relationship. That's the brokerage relationship with the customer. It has nothing to do with if they're in Miami and they don't want to do their job. They're probably still a transaction broker. And whether you work at a referral or something different, you're still going to pay them the same. So just so you know that. Okay. The rest of this letter, it's all about exposure, the bottom line, blah, 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 blah. Those are some things I've thrown in. We've changed it a billion times through the years. Those parts are really irrelevant. You can change it. I like the exposure. I probably would say, if you want to learn how to take your property global, I might go there. I've done many different ones. This is an older one. But just so you get the point. If you start with a letter, the next thing, if you don't have a phone number, should be a drop by. Happen to be in the neighborhood. Just curious. I noticed your home's no longer in the market. Are you still interested in selling? Yes? Well, great. If I were able to net you the same amount of money, could we maybe have a conversation and talk about that? I guess that will work. Okay. Well, terrific. I'd love to get some stats for you and some information. Can we come, can I come back later today or tomorrow? Right. It does the same conversation. All you want to know, three things. Are you still moving? If I can get you the same money, can we talk? What time? That's all you want to know. Any thoughts, any questions? I'm only three minutes over. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs>
So did anybody get anything new? Does anybody want to share something? It's still not clear to me where we're finding these. Um, these Expired? Things. Yeah. MLS. MLS, oh, okay. And you can create a search for yourself as the customer. So that way, when they expire, you get the notification. Absolutely. That's the beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Barry, um, yes. quick question. Sure. Uh, on your experience, um, initially, do you want to go after expires uh, that have expired recently, let's say in the past 10 days, or you want to go after expires that have been expired for more than 30 or 60 days? So to be honest, it depends on what's happening in the world. So typically, I would probably say the sooner the better, right? But right now, because of COVID, it might be a good thing to go after people who expired during or before that, you know, like around that time, maybe they didn't go back on the market because they were waiting for things to change. And now you can share, it's so incredible. During these, you know, four or five months, the homes have actually been selling faster for less money, right? So that's a great opener. So I would think, again, right now, my, my strategy might be also to go back to right before COVID and during COVID, like in the beginning, because I guarantee you that probably played into their decision to stay off the market. Now, remember, it could also be that they're uncomfortable, and, but we have all the virtual tools to be able to show their home, do virtual open houses. So that's another great benefit that Sotheby's offers that other companies may or may not, right? That was a great question. Thank you, Jaime. The other thing is that if you're, if you search a, a wide range of expireds, then those could possibly be relisted. They don't come off of that expired list. Yes. So what you want to do is if you click on the RPR button, it'll tell you if it's currently listed or not. Okay. It's way to do it. I like to do it anyway because I want to to quickly see what do they pay for the home, how long have they owned it, you know, uh, has there been any delinquencies? That's right there on RPR. RPR is awesome for that. So, unfortunately, I have to jump on a leadership meeting that I'm late for, but I told them I would be, so it's okay. But anybody else have any other questions? I hope you guys have all learned something. I hope you have some great new suggestions and thoughts about how to attack the whole. It's a great opportunity. And now more than ever, people do not understand. Like if you're sending regular postcards, people don't understand what the market's doing. They really, they watch too much TV and they see negative, 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 negative. They do not know that homes I keep looking per community, per area, everywhere in Central Florida I have looked. I have seen average days on market are down this year versus last year. I do January to now. This year versus January to now last year. Average prices are up. This average sales price is up and the days on market are down all across the board. I have not found a community yet that does not fit that mold. So we need to get that message out. So even if you're sending regular postcards to people, I would insert a letter in there to let them know you may not be aware, but it's incredible. This is what's happening. It's because of that lack of inventory. So if you were thinking about selling your home, you might want to consider it now while the average sales prices continue to rise and they're selling faster for more money. Good. If anybody needs help working on a letter, picking out a community, anything like that, or working up some thoughts about what you want to do with your expires, let me know. You know I'm always here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for hopping on. Thank you. Thank you.